Welcome at the Blender Quick Tip and for today I'll show you about the inbuilt video editor. But before I show you the magic, let me say why rendering your animation directly into a video is a bad idea. You have to imagine it takes one minute to render one frame. It will take 60 minutes to see your final result if your animation takes 60 frames. So when you're not happy with the video quality, you have to wait another 60 minutes to see the next result and do this over and over again until you're happy. But when you render your 60 frames into a JPEG or a PNG file just once and import them into a video editor, it will only take 20 to 30 seconds to make this into a video. If you're not happy with the results, you can change some options and it will take only another 20 to 30 seconds to make it into a video again because you don't have to re-render those 60 frames, which saves you tons and tons of time. The first thing you might want to do is go to File user preferences go to the system tab and all the way down here you can see your memory cache limit i have set mine to five gigabytes in case if you need more memory now this will all depends on how much ram memory you have if you have eight gigabytes i recommend you to do four or even lesser then just save user settings the next thing we are going to do is we're going to change the default to video editing so after you rendered your animation into JPEG or PNG files, you just put them into a different folder. And down below here, you click on add, add an image. And when you're in your folder with all your images, you just press A and click on add image strip. Then automatically it will add it behind each other. Now before doing anything else, I'm just going to shift D, duplicate this. Put this behind here, and I'm going to do that two times, just to make a longer video. And I have to calculate three times 59 frames is 177 where it ends. Now if I would play this, you might see some frame dropping, but this is only once, you just have to let it play. So Blender can calculate this, and when replaying it should be good. There you go. So this means you can even edit even more out, add some other stuff, add some sounds, but more about that another time. For now, all you have to do is go back to the vault settings, then here you have the output. Now let's change the output to FF MPEG video, and open this encoding tab, and change the output file container to AVI. Now you have to understand that I've tried many different combinations to see which one works the best for myself. And I'm leaving the codec on H264. And I'm going to put the output quality on none, use constant bitrate. And I'm going to put the encoding speed on ultra fast biggest file. Now depending of course on how long your animation is, the file won't be that big because 14 MB is not a big file. Then another thing that I'm going to do is change the bitrate. Now I'm recording my stuff actually on 50k bitrate, but in this case I'm going to change this to 60k. One last thing has to be done, and is change the resolution to the resolution you used for your pictures. In my case, let's change this to a 100%, and then just press on animation. Well, in my case, it took about plus minus 20 seconds. So if I would not be happy with the video quality, all I have to do is change some other options and re-render it again. And there you go, I have my video. You will notice one thing that there is a tiny bit of lag at the beginning, but that's the media player doing itself. It's not the video, because when I import this video into a video editor, the lag won't be there. So don't get confused by this. In another quick tip video I will explain you more things about this video editor because you can do way more stuff with it than only this. For now, if you've got some questions or requests, then comment below. If you found this video useful, then like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.